the last video, we started looking at how we can program components in Blazor WebAssembly, and I put together a fairly simple application that was connecting to a back-end API, which was serving up information about book reviews, and we displayed that on a Blazor page. So if you take a look at that, here was our application. I just left the existing pages that are generated when we create the project, but if I click on book reviews, we can see there that we've got all of those reviews. And the next feature I want to add is to actually provide the review summary. Now, you remember that what we're doing here in Blazor is kind of deliberately imitating what I did in earlier videos in Angular. And so if we look at the Angular application, we can see that on the one page we have the individual review, so Dr. No with different values, things like that. But then if we go to the summary page, we've just got the four distinct titles and then average ratings for those. So that's what we want to put together now in our Blazor application. But I'm going to do that using test-driven development, partly because that's generally a good idea and I'll show some good practices in TDD, but also there are a few aspects of unit testing of Blazor that are different from other environments. So if we just take a look at Visual Studio, the only change I've made since last time is I've added on an X-unit test project, so blazorbookreviews.tests, and I've put in a couple of folders, pages and services, because those are corresponding to the things I'm going to be testing. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to need to have a service to provide this summary information. So I've already got a service called Review Repository, which gives us the raw list of books coming from an HTTP client. We're going to have another service to do the summary of that. So let's do that, but using TDD. So the first thing I'm going to do is in the test code, I'm going to add a new class, and I'm going to call this summary service tests. And then in here, I'm going to put one simple test. So with X unit, that'll be a fact. And I'm going to call this one summarizes reviews. Got to make the class itself public. And then another thing I've already added to this test project is the MockU NuGet package, so we can start using that. So I'm going to say var mock repository. So I'm going to be mocking the review repository that would normally be injected into this summary service. So I'll say mock repository equals new mock, another namespace to get hold of. And then this is going to be mocking, as I say, that I review repository that we created last time. So that's our mock created. Then I'm going to have some mock data. So let's have var reviews equals new array of book review. And then in there, I don't even need to say the name of it because I can infer that. And I'm going to have a title of book one. And let's give that a rating of one. And then a couple more. So I'm going to have another one for book one with a rating of five. And remember, it's going to average those. So that should give book one an average rating of three. And then let's have just a one off for book two. So that will have an average of two. OK, and then let's put those into the mock. So we say mock repository dot setup. And then we'll say r gives and then get reviews async. And then we're going to have to say dot returns async and then the reviews that we have there. So that will mean when get reviews async is called, it will return our set of reviews. So all of this is still just our setup. Now we're going to actually need to create the service, which doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to say var service equals new summary service. Okay, so that doesn't exist. That's what we've got to create in a moment. And we're going to pass in our mock repository because that's what's going to need to be injected. So mock repository dot object, remember, with mock u is where we actually have that. Okay, now let's, at this point, even though we haven't really done a test yet, let's actually create this summary service just so that it compiles. Because remember the cycle of TDD, we write just enough code for the test to compile. So that means we're going to have to actually put something in there. So in services, we're going to add a class and it's going to be called summary service. 
and then it's going to have a constructor which is going to take an i review repository called repository and that's all we need to do because remember we're not trying to implement this yet we're just trying to make the tests so that they will compile and up to that point they are so then the next thing we're going to do is call a method on that service so we're going to say var summaries equals await service dot get summaries async. So again, calling a method that doesn't yet exist, we can get Visual Studio to generate that for us. So generate method, give it a quick check to see what it's actually done. Because the problem there is, because I've used var, it can't infer what the return type is. So it's actually going to be a public async task. It's going to return an i enumerable of book review. And then for now, I don't want to actually throw an exception because that would fail completely. It wouldn't even get back to the test because it would fail at that point. So what we do is we say return await task dot from result and then just some kind of empty collection, so that will be fine, that list of book reviews. So now, rather than throwing an exception, it still returns the wrong thing. It returns an empty collection, which clearly isn't what we're expecting, because we're expecting a collection that should have summaries for book one and book two. So that's what we now put in here. We'll now put in our assert dot collection, put in summaries, and then we're going to say s for summary gives. So this is in X unit testing the first summary and what we should be saying is assert dot equal and then we're going to want to have the title as book one so that will be s dot title and then we're also going to assert dot equal and then the average we said is going to be three for s dot rating so that's saying our first summary should say book one has an average rating of three and then our second one, book two, as an average rating of two. So that's our tests now put in there. And the point of this is, with test and development, now is where we do the sanity check. Because if I now run those tests, it would be bizarre if that test passed because we haven't put any implementation code in there. And so this is why we do this order in test and development, just to make sure our test is making sense, which it is, because if we look at the description, it's going to say expected two items because I've put the two in there and it's getting none because we haven't done any work and returned that empty list. So having done that, we now need to do the actual work of implementing this one. So if we now go back to our summary service and first thing we've got to do is make sure that that repository is kept hold of. So we'll put a private read only repository in there and just set that up. And then in this actual code here, we'll firstly get hold of the data from the repository. So I'm just going to say var results equals await underscore repository dot get reviews async, which is the one we wrote last time. And remember, that's the one that we've mocked in there to return that particular set of reviews. And then we've got to do the processing of turning this into the summary. And this is something that can be done quite neatly, actually, thanks to the link extension method group by. So what I can say here is results dot and then group by. And then we want to group them by title. So that will take all of the reviews we've got and put them into groups, in this case, for the mock data for just the two titles, book one and book two. Now, one thing I'm just going to do here, just to make the code a bit clearer, is... Those X's that it's put in, I don't find helpful. That one is going to be a review, so I'm going to call that R. And this one is actually the group itself, so I'm going to call that G, just so we're clear. Using X in both is not particularly clear, I don't find. So it's going to group them by title, and then on each group, we're going to say we want to give back a new book review whose title is going to be G.Key because the key is the title that we've got in there, so the groups are keyed on title. And then whose rating, we don't need to worry about the ID, but whose rating is going to be the average of the ratings within the group. So we can say G 
dot average and then pick out the rating as the thing that we want to average. Okay, so it's really neat in terms of not having very much code in there, but it's worth just understanding we put them into bins basically based on each of the titles. So two of them in this case, book one and book two. And then on each of those, we produce a single book review, which has the title that applies to everything in that group, and then the rating, which is the average we've got there. And that should be it. And let's just check that. So now if we run our tests, then that's working correctly. So we have got out of that the results we expected of a three and a two, as we should have. So nice example of test driven development. We entirely wrote the test first, and then we stubbed out the class under test, our summary service, made sure the test built and gave us errors. Then we implemented the class under test, and we got that working fine. Next step we need to do though is actually start displaying that on screen. So let's do that. And again, let's do this using test driven development. So what I'm now going to do is I will put in a page and we're going to have a page called review summaries dot razor dot CS and make it a partial class. All the same stuff we saw last time. Then I'm also going to go to the navigation and there we've got our book reviews. Copy that and put in review summaries and change that one to review summaries. And remember that we then have to put at the top of the page so that it knows to navigate here looking like that. So that's the just the stub that I put in there. Let's now start writing some tests for that. So in pages, let's do an add class. And I'm going to call this review summaries tests. And we'll make that public. And then in order to do testing on the actual blazer components, we can't really just treat them as plain old classes because the whole life cycle is managed by Blazor itself. So you can't really just create an object of the class we're dealing with. There is a library to help us with this. And so if we take a look at that, it's a thing called BUnit. Now, don't be confused. It's not an equivalent of XUnit or NUnit or Microsoft testing. It's a separate testing library that works alongside any of those. So we're using XUnit, but BUnit could work with any others as well. So let's do a manage NuGet packages and let's browse for BUnit. And there you can see we've got BUnit and we'll install that. And then back in our test code, let's put in a using BUnit. And then the key thing we've got to have is we need to have a thing known as a test context. So I'm going to put in private read only and then this test context class that comes from BUnit. And I'm going to call that underscore test context. And then I'm going to add a constructor in which I will initialize that. So simple enough, underscore test context equals new test context. Now I'm going to create my mock. Now remember the class under test is this review summary component. So what we're going to mock is actually the service we've just created. So we're going to be mocking this summary service, for which I then need an interface. So let's do that. Let's do another extract interface on here. Call that I summary service, just the one method. So we'll do that. And then in our test code, I'm going to again have this as a private member. So we'll have a private read only mock. Let's get hold of the namespace. And this is going to be a mock of the I summary service. And we'll call that mock summaries. And then in here, we'll create the new one. And also, we'll start creating some mock data. So we'll have summaries equals, and then we'll just put in a couple of summaries. So an array of book reviews. And in this case, we can just have new, and then we'll do title is book one, rating equals one. 
and book two, two. So no repeats here because this is assuming we've already done the averaging. So we just need one entry for each distinct book. Okay, and then we're going to put that into our mock summaries. So our mock summaries dot setup s gives s dot get summaries async, and it's going to be returns async, and then just those summaries. And then we're going to have to configure that mock object for injection. And you'll remember from last time, if we just take a look at our existing page, which was our book reviews here, with these components in Blazor, you don't have constructor injection. You use this injection attribute, which means that when we're doing unit testing, what we did in the previous test, where we could simply pass our mock into the constructor of the class under test, which is what we were doing there, we can't do that anymore because it doesn't have a constructor. And that's the first reason why we have to have this context, because this context will allow us to do the injection. So what we say here is underscore test context dot services dot add singleton. And that's an extension method, so it's going to need a, another namespace. And then on this one is where we say mock summaries dot object. Okay, so that's going to configure anything that has that interface, I summary service, it's going to use that mock object. And then the final thing we're going to do in here is we're going to have a private read only. And then another class that comes from this B unit is a thing called I rendered component. And that's generic and it's going to be for the component that we're actually trying to test here, which is our review summaries. And we'll just call that page. And then last thing we're going to do in the constructor is we're going to say underscore page equals and then from this test context, we can get hold of that. So we say dot render component. And again, we just put in the type that we want there. And I've put that into the constructor because we want that same setup on every test. We don't want to have to keep repeating ourselves. And in XUnit, that's where you put your standard initialization. One thing to watch out for, both the page and the test context are disposable. So we need to tidy up after ourselves. So on the test, if we put in our disposable, if we do a quick implement interface, and then all we need to do here is say underscore page dispose and underscore test context dispose. Okay, so that's our setup and our teardown. Now all we've got to do is write the actual test. And so what I can do here is just have a fact. And then I'm going to call this one simply fetch summaries. And pretty simple, really, because I can just say something like var summaries equals underscore page dot. And then remember, this page is a wrapper. It's this I rendered component. To get at the underlying object, you do dot instance. And so instance is our actual reviews summaries object. And then on there, I'm going to call a property called summaries which we haven't yet written. So once again, we're going to have to generate a stub for that. So let's do a generate property. It's not going to be particularly smart because it couldn't work out the return type, but we know what this is going to be. It's going to be an I enumerable of book review. And once again, we're going to initialize that just to be an empty collection. And then later on, we will fill it with the proper data. So that's what we've got in there. Back in the test, that's now happy. And then all we need to do is do another of our collection checks. So we're going to say assert dot collection summaries. And we know it should just contain these two items. So it's pretty straightforward. So we're going to say s gives and then assert dot equal book one and then s dot title assert.equal one and s.rating and then repeat that whole lot except for book two and a rating of two. 
Once again, run the tests. And we're getting a red light, as we'd expect, because we haven't got any data in there at all, so it's just going zero. So now, same process of test and development. We go back to the actual review summaries page. And on here, we're going to do the same sort of thing we did before. So we're going to have to have a injected property. And this is going to be of type I summary service. And it's going to be called summary service. And it can have a get in a set equals null, null bang. And then we're also going to override the on initialized async. And all we're going to do on there is say await on the base class. And then we're going to have summaries equals summary service dot get summaries async and await on that as well. So you can see a lot of these methods are very simple and if it were really this simple, we might not have broken it down into having these separate services and everything. But structurally, for a more complex application, that's how you should be doing it. And once again, that should be enough code for us to run the test and it should now pass. And so we're getting the correct behavior. So again, test driven development. Next thing to do though, obviously we still haven't implemented that component to actually display the data. So that's what we do next. In fact, the display is going to be very similar to that for the overall list of reviews. So if I just take that table there, pop it in here, and then remember we don't have a property called reviews, we've got a property called summaries. So we'll do that. I'll also just for consistency put summary in there and in there. And then when we run that, runs up okay. Obviously the book review is the same, but now if you look at review summaries, the thing I forgot to do was register my new service in program. So let's go into there. And once again, let's add another one of these. In this case, it's our summary service and summary service in there. And so now we're running up. We've got our book reviews and then we've got our review summaries and we can see that's all looking good. So that was it. That was tester and development on both a service for which there wasn't really anything particularly new. That's the sort of thing you could have done with any type of application, not just Blazor. But then when we we're doing the unit testing on the component, we had to have that B unit and had to have that test context so that we could do the injection, do the creation of the Blazor component and a few other things as well. Now, actually, we can do rather more with BUnit, which is what we're going to look at next time, because we're going to be looking at how we can actually use BUnit not simply to test the programming interface of our component class, but also to test that it's actually putting the right stuff into the HTML, so actually what is being displayed. But that's what we'll do next time. If you enjoyed that, do click like, do subscribe, and tune in for the next episode.